Hey guys, in this video, we'll see how to use Work Manager in Android. This is how our app looks like. Let's click on the Backup Now button. So it shows us, hey, we are backing up your data. And after a delay of three seconds, which is mocked, it says, hey, we have updated the file. So basically, this creates a file in your system and with some contents in it. If we navigate to our app folder inside the device file explorer, we see this backup data. So this is the file which we create. And if we click on it, it says, hey, we have backed up on this timestamp. Let's see now how it is getting logged when we click on backup now. So we click here. It says, hey, I'm in progress. Then I'm in progress. It shows the notification here. And finally, it shows that, hey, I am finished with updating file status now let's test our cancel functionality so we click on backup now and immediately click on cancel backup so we see backing up the data and if we click on cancel it should not give us the notification updating file and which is the case let's see what the logs say now so we click on backup now and click on cancel so it says hey i'm in progress and when i click on cancel it says hey i am cancelled Let's see what the periodic backup says. So it shows us the notification on launch just for the sake of this demo. And it should have created a file in the same name, but it had overwritten the text. So let's see. So if we go to our app folder again in the device explorer, we again open this file backup underscore data. But now we see that the content is periodic backup with the current timestamp. We open our app Gradle and put on the dependencies for the work manager and the test for work manager. We have used on-demand initialization of work manager here. So for that, first go in manifest XML, enter this section, and then create a to-do application or application class. In the application class, we use the configuration provider from the Android X work, where you can customize your work manager but in our case, we have used it just to set the minimum logging level to debug. All of our workers are present inside this directory workers. So let's see the first worker, which we have on demand backup worker. On demand backup worker is extending from coroutine worker. So we have to override the do work method basically. And when we start this worker, we show the notification which says, hey, we are backing your data. This function do work is basically, it has to be overridden when we have to inherit from worker class. So, and it returns a result of type result, which is either can be success or can be failure. Inside this, we are basically dummy creating a function dummy work, which in the real world would fake a network call, but, but in our case, we are just making it sleep for three seconds. And finally, we are returning a string from that dummy work. The result from this dummy work is basically passed on to the worker's result success in case we need that result in one of our functions. So this is done by using work data off. What this does is basically converts a list into a data object, which can be passed on further. And in case we have some error, we just pass in the result failure. Next worker, which we created is a file worker class, which extends from worker class. And so this method is, this worker is basically responsible for creating that file and updating the contents into the file. We override the do work method and this also has to pass in some result, failure or success. Next, we show the notification that, which says, hey, we are updating your file. We create the content which is to be passed to a function which is called save to file. So in this function, we check if the output directory exists or not. The path which we specify is my app backups. And it, say, it checks in and it creates a file of the name which is specified under this constant backup underscore data dot text. The content which is passed as a parameter is appended to this file. And finally, we return the URI of that file. Back in our file worker, we receive the output URI. And that result is basically passed using work data off to the 
workers result.success. Next, we create a view model. This view model basically has our work manager and the work request. There are two functions inside our view model. So first is the begin backup and the second one is the cancel backup. In this view model, basically we are chaining up our work requests. So first one is our on-demand backup worker and which is then followed by saving the contents using the file worker. We decide the constraints which our work worker needs. So the constraints set are the storage should not be low and the requires battery should not be low and the network type should be connected. So next we initiate our unique work using the work manager which we created above which is here. Begin unique work should only be used if you want to chain some work workers together. So in our case we are chaining that's why we use it and this requires uh, existing work policy which are basically different types and we specify keep in our place next we also specify that this work request is from which class which is our on-demand backup worker and we give our backup worker a name which is specified just in the constant file now we create the work request for our on-demand backup worker using one time work request builder so we add a tag and we set the constraints which we specified above and finally we pass into our work continuation this work request build we do the same for our file worker class where we create the work request builder for that specifying the constraints adding a tag and finally passing it to the work continuation the last step is to enqueue all these work continuation which is used to enqueue the request on the background thread since we have added the tags onto our work request builders, we can also listen to the changes in this data using the live data. Back in our main activity, so this is basically a compose UI and here this section is basically the backup button. We initialize the on-demand backup view model which we saw in the previous section and here we also use the backup data info which is basically the live data which we have created in the backup view model we get the list of work info which is also the return type for this live data and this is passed into this function backup data info observer we extract the first work info from this list and we compare its state so if it succeeded we print out the i am finished and so on and so forth this backup button takes in a view model instance which we created and if we see in this backup button class we basically call the begin backup function on backup now and cancel backup function on the cancel backup create a new worker class called as periodic backup worker and this extends from the worker class we override the do work which returns a result and firstly we show the notification of periodic backing we save the current timestamp in a string variable called content and pass into our save to file function and finally we get the output of the uri we pass in this output uri as string to the work data of and finally to the result success Inside our to-do application, we set the constraints which we require. Let's say network type as unmeter, which is Wi-Fi. We set the interval to one and would repeat in terms of days. Next, we add the tag with the constraints which we specified above. This periodic backup is of type periodic work request. And finally, this is enqueued using work manager and we give it a specified or a unique name with the existing work policy as keep. We place the tests of our workers inside this worker folder. We have some basic setup before the test execute in the function setup where we initialize the context and executors. Since our on-demand backup worker is of type coroutine worker, hence we use this test listenable worker builder which comes from the package or the dependency test android x work test we make use of run blocking function which is from coroutines and what it does is basically blocks the current thread and in this we initialize or we call the do work and finally we assert that if the result is success and run this test 
So it launches a emulator and we see the backing up data notification. And here we see the test has passed. So note we didn't saw the notification for updating file because we never tested the file worker. Next we test the periodic backup worker. Same like before we have some initialization in the setup function and we initialize the context and executor. In the first test, test periodic backup worker, we create our periodic backup worker test worker using this Android X test worker builder. And finally, we call the do work and assert that if the result is success or not. In the second test, we check if the periodic task was basically enqueued. So we make use of work manager test int helper, which comes from the testing suite of work manager. We initialize and get the instance of work manager, set the constraints as we require. We create the periodic work request using periodic work request builder, specifying the interval as let's say 24 and in hours. And finally, we enqueue this request in the work manager. Making use of test driver, we forcefully set the period de delay and to met and all the constraints also as met. And finally, we get the work info for using work info by ID. And we assert that the, what's the state of the work info and is it equal to enqueued. Let's run this periodic backup worker. So this launches our emulator and we see the request or the message periodic backing along with our tests as passed. That's it from this video, guys. Source code and article links are mentioned in the description below. And thanks, guys, for watching.